Uh, it's great to be with you guys. Uh, this is my first time at the AIJ conference, actually, and also my first time in Minnesota. So I'm really uh, looking forward to purifying myself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka later. <laughs> For those who didn't get that joke, that is both a Prince joke and a Dave Chappelle joke. You can look it up later. Um, but Instagram is actually my side gig. Uh, my primary job is raising four little people with my wife uh, back in California. Uh, they have a lot of energy and keep us quite, quite busy. Uh, but uh, over the course of my career, I've had the opportunity to work, from, uh, work for some great companies and brands. So, so I used to work in New York at an agency called RGA, uh, and I worked on the Nike Plus line of business, working on a lot of the first run tracking apps on your phone, and also on the Nike Plus fuel band, and then I decided to leave the agency world and went on to lead design at Foursquare, and from there took that whole little circus you just saw out to California to work at YouTube before deciding to uh, join the Instagram team. And so when I started at Instagram, uh, a couple of interesting things happened within my first few weeks there. The first, I was in a product review where the decision was made to allow for non-square photos to appear on the app. Sounds crazy, right? Uh, after all the other changes we've made, it sounds like a small thing, but at that moment, my head like exploded. I was like, what did I get myself into? But the second moment was when I was asked to take a look at the app icon and actually redesign that app icon. So a bit of advice, if this happens to you, um, I would suggest that you say no and calmly walk out of the room. Sounds like a great project, but uh, it, it is a, quite a challenge. But I wasn't that smart, and so I said, okay, I'll think about it. And so in talking to uh, the co-founders, Mike and Kevin, two really great people, um, they explained to me that they felt that this was the right time to take this on. Um, that the company had, had grown tremendously. Uh, we were on track to hitting half a billion people using the app every month. Uh, the formats that people were using to share was changing, and we knew that we had a roadmap of a lot more change to come. So they said, you know, this is the right time to take it on. So if you haven't remembered the, the old version, this is what it looked like at the time. This is a very well-loved app icon. Uh, and there were kind of a couple camps, people that really loved it, and then also people that were really disappointed when we didn't change it after iOS 7, and then all the subsequent releases. Instagram was kind of the last holdout, so it was already a little bit of a polarizing thing to, to work on. One of the core parts of our process at Instagram is trying to define problems well. And uh, so we set out to do this. First, I started by looking at um, how Instagram was being represented in the world. And I quickly found out that it was a favorite pastime of pretty much every web designer to redesign the Instagram app icon, uh, or the glyph, or you know, the logo itself. And so this was a really interesting opportunity, because here we have a, a brand that is really well-loved, a part of people's daily lives, um, and there was a level of co-ownership that was happening between uh, the brand and its community. And then looking inward, I could see that we had a lot of inconsistencies in how we were using uh, the assets that existed. And so I knew that we were going to need to have a, a stronger system, had a little bit more versatility to it going forward. So this is a little bit of history lesson. The, the Instagram icon that existed uh, when I started working on this project had been around for about three years, but there were two other versions before it that most of us have never used. Both were designed by the CEO, actually. And so it was a good perspective to understand this is where we came and you know, start considering what would be the heir to the throne next. A big part of my job as leading the design team it was to actually bring the entire company along, which was made up of non-designers, you know, mostly engineers, who had never gone through this sort of process before. And so I needed to give them confidence in that, hey, this new guy coming in you know, could help, um, help go through this process in a way um, that would lead to a good result. And luckily, when you're taking on this sort of work, you can lean on people a lot more talented than yourself, or in my case, for sure. Um, and so I looked for some inspiration and some uh, to help educate the company. Much of the information you're already familiar with. But perhaps this familiar information, looked at from a new point of view, will produce new insights. Let's begin. So quick show of hands, how many have seen this video? 
We got a couple of good, but maybe half the audience haven't, so that's exciting, because it's worth watching again and again. I've watched it probably 100 times now. Um, so this is Saul Bass's pitch uh, for the Bell uh, telecommunication system. And uh, Saul had a similar design problem where he was taking what had become like kind of an old mark and was trying to take it into the future, trying to modernize it. And he had to convince an entire organization that this was something that was OK to do, that you could feel good about it. Um, and it's a great film that he put together, and literally cutting film, uh, and, and the soundtrack and everything. So I actually want to share a bit of this with you. You saw this apple. This apple. This apple. This apple. You saw four different apples, but you didn't notice they were different, and you were concentrating. You see, one of the apples has a small leaf, another has a different stem, another has a... Hello? Put any kind of a bell inside a circle, and people will recognize it as the bell system. Watch. see them as a bell. How up to date the system looks, however, depends upon the kind of bell. So at Instagram, we actually have these all hands uh, every week. And so I was using clips from that video uh, to help people understand that, hey, this problem has been solved before. Um, we're just following in footsteps. So we set out to get some work started. And we have this uh, another value at Instagram, which is to do the simple thing first. And what that means is, once you've defined the problems well, and you start to explore the possible solution space. Don't necessarily look to over-design or over-engineer your solutions to the problem just to kind of bedazzle the world with your talents and expertise. Look for an opportunity to come with a, a very simple solution to the problem. And so for, for me, that started first by actually putting a team together. Um, so I put a team of a mix of talents. You know, I had uh, Eric Good up there, uh, Robert Padbury, and Joy Vincent. And so two of those guys came from outside of uh, the company, and they had never worked there before, whereas Joy Vincent uh, was already a part of the design team. And this was really important to bring folks in-house, because I wanted uh, for the, all of this work to be happening just a conference room away from the co-founders of the company and within the area that the rest of the company was working in. So at any point in time, people could come in and talk to uh, the designers working on the project. So this team set out to do the simple thing first. And in the first couple of weeks, tried to flatten out the existing app icon. And so they were following the iOS 7 guidelines, basically, for developing new icons. And we centered somewhere around uh, that candidate there. And we looked at it and said, OK, we could check the box and say we refreshed the Instagram icon. But we also said, you know what, this kind of looks like a bootleg version of what exists already. And I don't want to do this again in a year. So couldn't settle. Uh, we have to go farther. And I think that's a really important part of the process. You know, you can't, you have to push the edges. Um, you have to keep pushing until you find the cliff, and then you can come back over, right? So. Next, we explored all possible bell forms, searching for the most up-to-date expression, emerging finally with a bell that has strength and impact, and above all, the look of today. I think my favorite part is the soundtrack in there. But, um, so we followed a, a similar you know, design process, and one that's very familiar to all of you, uh, exploring all the different sorts of camera glyphs that we could come up with, including some that were uh, related to the word mark. And then we do quick tests uh, by adding color to them to start to figure out, hey, is there a potential app icon here? And just go through iteration after iteration, uh, trying to see something that, that we thought could work. At the same time, we were dogfooding some of the candidates that we liked. So we would actually create app icons that could launch into Instagram. And we'd walk around with those for a couple weeks, trying to sneak, let them sneak up on us you know, to kind of figure out whether this is something that might have felt good on day one, but a week later, you were sick of it. right? So we wanted to have something that could last. And then, of course, we were testing out the main glyph on other, other uh, contexts and services. Of course, a tote bag, um, but also you know, uh, outdoors um, in terms of uh, digital signage, 
um, whatever we could come up with to figure out whether it had the versatility we're looking for. So as I mentioned before, a big part of this job was bringing the company along, and a core part of that was um, keeping an open house. And what that meant on a regular basis was that we would allow people to come into our studio, which is basically a small, windowless conference room, and talk to the designers and see the work in progress, and really start to understand what the decision-making process looked like, have act actual conversations about the work, and help people be really engaged in the process and make it as transparent as possible. And one of the more fun things that we did was uh, during one of these all hands, I had the entire audience, which you know probably was about 150 people, uh, basically redesign the app icon. But they, that wasn't the brief. The brief was within 10 seconds, they had to sketch out the existing app icon. And so we got a really interesting range, range of work. I can show you some of that. Uh, things that look like keyholes, stuff that looks like runny eggs, fried eggs, uh, some floppy disks in there. And so this actually helped in two ways. One, it helped uh, the, 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 the whole company get actively engaged in the, the, the design process. But it was also a really helpful input in to, uh, for the designers because it helped us understand what was most important about the app icon as existed today or at that point and what we needed to kind of carry forward. And so ultimately we came up with this very simple camera glyph. Uh, you can't take anything else away from it, it loses all value. Um, and so we felt really good about that, but we still were faced with this guy. And by this point, this thing is haunting me because I'm constantly comparing every candidate direction to this. And it's like, does it hold up? Is it just as good? And I started to break down, well, what, what's going on with this? Why is this such a hard problem to solve? And it's because it's got this teddy bear brown, and it's like warm and cuddly texture, and there's a rainbow in it, and the lens is all candied up. There's just so much to love here and to compete with. So coming back, you know, we had this very simple uh, glyph to work with, but we wanted to have a pretty strong color story. And that's uh, how we started to take this rainbow and actually create a pretty complicated gradient that was kind of a sunset to it. And we felt like it had the right level of levity and, and optimism um, that, that represents Instagram, and we felt really good about taking this to the world. But that's only one step. After you've done all this work, you've got to explain to hundreds of millions of people why you did what you did. Um, and so a lot of time and energy went into figuring out how we could do that, both from, uh, for different audiences, whether it's for all the people that use Instagram, or in my case, I was thinking a lot about you guys. I was thinking about all the designers that are looking at us saying, how the hell do they end up with that, right? And so we put together a film uh, that was, the goal was to both take you through and give you a peek into some of the actual candidate directions we considered, uh, as well as uh, give you um, just an understanding of the fact that this was not a straightforward process, but we had fun doing it. So now you've got your icon, the thing that you want to bring to the world, and you've got your fancy video. Uh, what do you do next? Well, in my case, you buy a bunker. <laughs> you stock it with tequila. It's a true story. So, um, <laughs> so on launch day, you do have to seal yourself, right? You've got to, hopefully, the reason why you're bringing the, the whole company together is you're going to need them. You're going to need them to bring this out, and they're going to have to go on this ride with you. Um, and in, in our case, on, on the day of launch, we started putting up um, some, some posters. At this point, we actually brought in the great folks at Collins to help us build out the whole system. So thinking about a whole um, set of gradients and color system to work with, uh, 
figuring out typography. At this point, we hadn't been even marketing externally ever for Instagram. And so we were just playing with some of that stuff internally. Um, this is a quick shot of what the war room looked like on the day of launch. You've got designers working with engineers, uh, with um, comms people, marketing people, kind of all hands on deck for this. So it's a re really big moment. And actually, that's one of the lessons here is that this was a, a really big uh, kind of bet for us, a very visible change, um, and, and something, that, something that involved the entire company. Um, and it was a proud moment, but it was also kind of quite a scary moment for us. And it was really, it was one of the first moments that we actually made, you know, such a massive change to Instagram and ended up being probably one of the smaller changes to Instagram over the past couple of years. But it was a really uh, kind of team building uh, moment for us. And the internet responded. Did you guys see this? I don't know, I hope you did. I've seen a version of it. So this was a, a great moment for me. I think that the most amazing part about this is that uh, it took 10 minutes after us, we were putting this app icon out, 10 minutes this was up on Twitter. <laughs> it gives you a sense of how fast trolls can work. I just laughed about it. It was actually a really light moment for me. But on the inside of Instagram, some really amazing things were happening. So uh, there was already a tradition on Instagram of people recreating the Instagram logo, really creative, wonderful people doing that work. Uh, and this is something that someone did actually cutting together uh, flowers uh, and creating a really beautiful piece of work. We actually have a print of this uh, in our office. And um, we didn't pay for this work. This is something that uh, we, we gave them the opportunity to do, and they, and they did. And it's really, um, we couldn't have asked for anything better. So I skipped over this a little bit, but we actually didn't just launch an app icon on that day. You know, we actually launched four app icons. We, we rebranded um, uh, our suite of apps, and then more importantly, we actually changed the inside of the app. And we actually stripped away a lot of the color in the app. So the idea was you'd come through this really colorful doorway, and then all of the color would come from the content, would come from the community. And we really liked that pairing and found that uh, it resonated pretty well with the people who, who started using it. And then we took that into our space. So we had the opportunity um, about six months later to uh, create our own headquarters. And so we took a lot of the same aesthetic that we applied to the app and brought it into our environment, the place that people work at like at Instagram, come through every day. And if you ever come to visit Instagram, you can use one of our fun photo booths, but obviously uh, take a lot of, um, a lot of the, the, the vision from the app icon itself. And a lot of this work was actually being done by the same designers. This is Joy Vincent, who actually worked on the gradient mesh for the app icon itself, and this is him playing with Pantone colors because the painters got the paint wrong. Um, and so we're, we're going through all of that, right? And you know, I think, again, once again, this was another moment for the company, you know, which started from this small seed of the app icon, but turned into so much more, turned into our new home. Uh, and so it really helped push us forward. Which helps make me think about what really matters about all of this. So yes, you get to do um, you know, a really flashy project that impacts hundreds of millions of people. You get to put out work that you're really proud of, but actually what ended up being most important was what it did for the company. It showed us that we could do uh, big things together, that we could make big changes, and, and the, the bonds that we were built were, were what's most valuable to me. And this is particularly resonant right now because I, I shared with you uh, one of the designers that had worked on this project. This is Joy Vincent. Joy Vincent passed away a couple months ago, unexpectedly. Um, and this was a heartbreaking moment, and it's still a heartbreaking thing to even talk about for me. But when I look back at that work, what really matters is the time that I was able to spend with him and the time that he was able to spend with the team working on something that he was very proud of and put his heart into. So if you all have the opportunity to, to do this sort of work again, absolutely lead your teams, or if you're actually producing the work, put your foot in it, you know? Actually go out there and, and do your best work and put out something that you're proud of. But never forget that it's not just about the work that you're putting out there, it's about the people. It's about the people you're working with. And that's actually the thing that's going to last the longest. So, thank you. Amen. I actually have something to tell you.
Okay. So you know, no, not, the 99 New podcast is the number one most requested podcast in my car when I'm driving my kids to and from school. So thank you very much. For your <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, so you mentioned the bunker. Mm. Uh, you mentioned tequila. I did. Um, this is a room full of designers that have been uh, probably subject to this type of you know the type of criticism of one person, a client, or mm -hmm. a boss, and and you're potentially subject to the criticism of uh, 500 million people. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, what's going through your mind, what's in your gut when that stuff happens, and yeah. how do you steal yourself, how do you cope? Yeah, I, well, I think it's like all the stuff before that, you know, the, um, the level of commitment you have to have mentally for this sort of thing, because it is a fairly subjective thing. Yeah. And, you know, for, for me, it was like, okay, I have to feel like I'm willing to get fired for this, because yeah. <laughs> you know that because you're also asking that of uh, like my boss in this case, the CEO. He has to feel like I feel this good about it, and I'm going to take heat for it because you're going to take heat for it. Yeah. So that's step one. And then the day of, you just ride the wave and literally sit in a windowless con conference room, listening to music. And don't look. Don't look. After a certain point, after the first wave, we just we just like left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does it still pop up occasionally, even though you try to avoid it? Like uh, now, it's pretty settled down. I think people have accepted it. You know, yeah. I mean, it's 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 it, we're privileged enough to be something that people use every day, multiple times a day, right. and so it kind of just burns in they and people used, transition. They get yeah. used to it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, it's this double-edged sword because you want your work to matter. Mm -hmm. You you know that people have an intimate connection with this mm -hmm. app and mm -hmm. with the icon itself, yeah. and yeah. and that means that when you mess with it. Yeah, you're messing with, yeah. I mean, people compare it to messing with people's furniture you yeah. know, in their house and then walking out. And but, that's, but that's why the work matters. That's why you, what you did matters. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk about what it, so, the, so your boss, the CEO, one, one of the, who, who was the one who designed the original logo? It's one of the uh, founders? No, CEO, yeah, Kevin. Okay. Designed, yeah. So, okay, so the CEO designs the original and, and you're like, I'm going to make this better, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and what is that navigating that like? Even though that's what they wanted, obviously. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it goes back to the point of why you need to have a team that's embedded. Yeah. That they can literally come by, have conversations, and we can just go over it and over it again. Mm -hmm. And I think um, allowing them to uh, give tons of feedback and be very involved in it as opposed to any sort of grand presentation and ta-da moment, they need to see you know, how things are being made and, and mm -hmm. they need to be a part of that. And I think that part we did pretty well. Yeah. But there was, is there some part of like how you have to temper your like, well, this is better because of this, and then you have to just kind of change your language you know, slightly to not offend oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the original <laughs> of what you want to change about No, it? no, I, I think they're, they're pretty humble and, and new, you know, actually because they, they, the one that was there for about three years was the better version of what Kevin made, and, yeah. and that came from someone in the community that they you know, they acquired it, and um, uh, so they were they were humble enough uh, to to know that hey there are there are great people out there who can do this better than we can, um, but yeah they're, 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 they have good taste so I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well obviously yeah. Um, so the new logo signaled this period of of really a lot of change in the app itself. Mm. Did you always know that it was tied to um, all this other functional and aesthetic change inside of what was going on? So yeah, we pretty much, as we started to get to like the main candidate direction, we, were, we started this process of looking at the UI at the same time. And then we went back and forth on should we launch one before the other? And then ultimately said, you know what, let's rip the Band-Aid off. Um, which I think was a pretty smart decision. Yeah. Um, and then we knew that there were other things, everything from having ads on Instagram to you know, uh, changes to, to feed and things like that coming. Um, so we, we knew that um, we had to get this out of the way first in order to take on those challenges too. Yeah, but did you, did you, is there a way that those affected the aesthetic choices or anything like that? How did you, when, when you knew that ads were coming or knew that uh, you know, the different stories are gonna be told differently, does that, did it change and form everything, or did it all yeah. kind of evolve, or like how did it all function together? Well, we knew that the things showing up in feed, for instance, were going to get more complicated. So yeah. we had to kind of get out of the way right. of that. So there was another reason to kind of strip away some of the chrome. And make it more simple. Yeah, for sure. And, and then you also took some of the aesthetic language and turned it into your headquarters. Yeah, in your yeah, that was so exciting. Like, so did that also follow, or did you know that these things were coming, or did you always did you always think when you had this simplified glyph that you were going to like, oh, this will be great because I can put it on a 
bike sticker or something like yeah, that. Yeah, kind of. Like, we were just thinking that, you know, it should be something that can live anywhere and still hold up. It's simple enough that anyone can draw it with a piece of chalk, but then, you know, you could have it if you wanted five, ten years from now, uh, and you could still continue to build on it and use it in new ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the, I, so I, um, from my job, I often make fun of flags um, mm -hmm. <laughs> as, you know, uh, and one of the things that happened to me is I, was, I did this TED talk and I made fun of the Milwaukee flag like a lot. And then I began to, <laughs> I began to stare at it more and more and I kind of fell in love with it yeah, after a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now it's like not one I desperately want to change yeah, the same way. Yeah, yeah. Is there something about the way that when you're working and staring at um, the original or the icon that you were meant to change, yeah, yeah, yeah. that it became harder and harder over time to actually change it. Oh, it wasn't, it came, uh, you felt like you're competing with it. Yeah. Right? And you're kind of asking yourself, you know, like, does this stand up? Like, is it even? Right. And, and actually, what we came out with was very different. It was a big leap. But from a visual weight point of view, it felt like even. Yeah. And so that felt like the right kind of Indiana Jones like swap, you know, <laughs> going on. And, um, and, and uh, but yeah, the, the, it was, that's what I meant. It was, it was haunting me. It's like you stare at it and you just see more and more and you look you deeper. You see the teddy deeper, bear. And you just you see like, the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, that's um, that's a that's amazing. <laughs> I get st I get stuck on that stuff too. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, being in, in you know embedded in this place, you know, like what is it like to be the head of design, um, and know the product so intimately and how you use it? Like, um, do you miss the moving from project to project thing, or do you really? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the in-house, like, how does that feel for you for yeah. this type of project? So I, 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 I think I've enjoyed going a lot deeper, you yeah. know, and being really committed uh, to a particular experience, right, and just trying to make that better over time. Mm -hmm. And I also really appreciate using something that, or making something that people use every day and find value in every day. I think that's a pretty special opportunity. Yeah. Um, and so... Um, yeah, I, I think in early career, it's helpful to kind of hop around and try different things, figure out what you like. But for me, it was about um, going deeper and understanding the business and understanding um, the mechanics, core mechanics of how a social platform works in this case, mm -hmm. and then having multiple at-bats, you know, multiple attempts to make it better, as opposed to just like passing off a deck or a prototype and then, you know, running to the next thing. Right. Um, there are good muscles that you develop there as well that, that come into play, but I've just enjoyed um, being um, uh, on the inside. But there's probably not going to be like a new logo anytime really soon. No project um, like this. Uh, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but uh, the thing that hopefully what we've done is we made it, if we ever wanted to do something new, the hop would be a lot easier. I think yeah. it was very, it's a bigger challenge uh, to move from something that's so ornamented and rendered to something that's based off of just uh, a simple graphic or mark. So hopefully that's the theory. So it's a little bit easier. I mean, now you've... you've you've established like how you want it to be and it's a yep. little bit easier to tweak it. I mean, like, do you, do you create, I mean, so there's a problem with, like, I think a lot of Silicon Valley and startup people in general, like, they kind of crave the bunker. They mm. crave these big things. Mm. And so, mm. like, do you worry that you don't have as challenge as hard or as big as this one? Mm. Um, or do you just know there will be ones as you keep going? Yeah, I mean, since I've been a part of Instagram, we've always had something big coming, right? right. You know, and, and so that's been really, um, uh, it keeps you, keeps you going. There's always like a new mountain to climb. Um, and then also my job is building out a team and trying not to mess up Instagram as we become bigger, right? And to kind of keep a group of people on the same page and keep uh, the quality high. And so that's another challenge in its own outside of anything new and flashy coming out to the world. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.